Today's practical is acceleration due to gravity using simple pendulum. We all know that a pendulum is a simple device in which we are having a weight tied to a thread and it is fixed on a rigid stand. And the formula for the time period is 2 pi square root L by G. This formula is simply indicating the time period of a pendulum is directly proportional to square root of length of pendulum. So, dear students, if we take square both sides, that is t square, then it will be directly proportional to L. This thing simply indicating you, if you will plot a graph between t square and L, then it must come a straight line. Because when you will remove the directly portion, t square is equal to k L by. This is the one of the observation which we have to take from this pendulum and note down in your practical notebooks. Here you can take a length like 10 cm, 20 cm, 30 cm, 40 cm. And here you can have the corresponding t square values. Second thing, you know that t is inversely proportional to square root of g. When we are doing this experiment on surface of earth, we know that on surface of earth, at every place, the value of g is constant. So by knowing the value of t, by knowing the value of l, we can find out the value of g. We can use this formula for finding out the value of g. Again, squaring both sides, equation 1, we are having t square is equal to 4 pi square l by g and g is equal to placing g here and t square here 4 pi square l by t square so what is required now for calculating value of g one is the value of l and second is the t we can measure the l by taking the length of thread from this point to the center of both Please note that length is not to be measured up to the point where thread is there. Length is to be measured from this point to the center of bow. So for taking this, we will measure the length of thread plus diameter of bow. How that is radius, that is to be added. And this length of this clip which is there, which is connecting this thread with the bow. So this is how we measure the length of pendulum. And then the most important part, how to measure the time period. When this pendulum will oscillate, it will go like this. <clears throat> this is known as the peak position. This is the left peak position or extreme position. This is the mean position and this is the right extreme position. Students often confuse in calculating one time period. They often do mistake like this. One time period, two time period, three time period, four. But this is wrong. This is the half of the time period. In actual one time period is like this, starting from mean position, first left extreme, then again mean, then right extreme, then again mean. This is your one time period. If I will show you that it is like this, if this is your pendulum, these are the extreme positions, then starting from the mean position, first peak position t by 4, again coming back to mean position going back to another peak position and then coming back. This complete tenure is your one time period. Okay? This is also t by 4, this is t by 4 and this is t by 4. So 4 t by 4 making 1 t. The second part to calculate practically the time period, we cannot calculate accurately the time period of one oscillation. For calculating time period, <coughs> we can measure time period of 10 oscillations or we can measure time period of 20 oscillations, 15 oscillations as per our convenience. And we will be using a stopwatch for calculating the time period. We will observe the number of periods. Here I am going to use the digital stopwatch I am having with me. You can use any stopwatch, you observe this, you will touch it, it will start, again touch it, it will stop. 
and we can reset it from this point. Okay, this type of stopwatch you will be having your cell phone. We will start experiment by just giving this pendulum an oscillation. Whenever it crosses the mean position, I will start one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14 and 15. So this is the time of 15 oscillations that is 19.8 seconds. 19.8 seconds if is the time period of 15 oscillations then by simply dividing 19.8 divided by 50 the value came out to be 1.32 seconds. So 1.32 seconds is your time period. So value of t came out to be 1.32 seconds. This is the one observation. Now you can repeat this experiment for 20 oscillations, for 10 oscillations. Suppose you are getting the values 1.30 seconds or 1.33 seconds. By taking at least three observations, we can calculate the mean value of all these three readings T1, T2, and T3. Then T mean is equal to T1 plus T2 plus T3 by 3. In this example, we are having 30, 33, and 32. 30, 33, and 32. That is 95 by 3. 3, 3, ja 9. 3, 6, 1. 2, 3, 6, 18, 2, 3, 6, 18, so it is 31.5.